This is a reading from Sorcerer's Apprentice. We failed to realize it was an omen when it came. Sunshine streamed down through an almost cloudless indigo sky, warming the dew-covered lawn. The gardener had fished out his dilapidated machine for the first mow of the summer. The great yew tree, basking in sunlight, threw long shadows across the grass. Squirrels dashed about in the monkey puzzle and the copper, be copper beach. A bank of azaleas perfumed the early morning air. Then, quite suddenly, hailstones the size of conkers showered down from above, shattering the peace. A lone cloud in an unending blue sky had spawned the freak bombardment, which persisted for about three minutes. And as the last nuggets of ice struck the lawn, the doorbell echoed the arrival of an unexpected visitor. My family's home in an isolated English village was not unused to bizarre guests. The house was a magnet for the peculiar. One could never be quite certain whom the next guest would be to arrive. But even by normal unpredictable standards, the man standing at the porch waiting to be welcomed was anyone but typical. The first thing that struck me about the tower in Pashtun was his extraordinary bristliness, an immense bush of woolly beard masked much of his face, hanging like an inverted black candy floss. It fanned out in all directions, his hands, ears and nostrils, and hooked beak of a nose were also thick with waxy black hair. In the few places where the skin was bald, the fingertips, the palms, and below the eyes, it was creased and scaly, like an armadillo's snout. The sable eyes spoke of honesty, and the furrowed brow hinted of an anxious past. The giant bear of a man teaseled the froth of beard outwards with a scarlet plastic comb, and dusted down his filthy khaki shalwar kameez shirt and baggy trousers, the preferred outfit of the Hindu Kush. Straightening the knotted Kabali turban, which perched on his head like a crown, he peered down at the ground bashfully as the front door was pulled inwards. My father recognizing him as Hafiz Jan, son of Muhammad ibn Makbul, embraced him. The Pashtun's luggage, a single sealed tea chest bearing the word Assam in black stenciled lettering was carried in ceremoniously. It was heavy like an elephant calf and stank of rotting fish. Although received at no notice, half his jar was welcomed with great decorum. Tea and refreshments were brought and pleasantries exchanged. Blessings and gifts were conferred upon him. According to Eastern tradition, my father expounded in detail the pedigree of our distinguished visitor. His forefathers had fought alongside my own ancestor, the Afghan warlord and statesman, John Fashan Khan, a nom de guerre, translating literally as he who scatters souls. None have been so courageous or trusted as the progenitors of Hafiz Jan. They had accompanied the warrior on all his campaigns. Many had died in battle side by side with members of my own family. Then, in, 19, in 1842, the Lord had travelled with an enormous retinue of soldiers from Afghanistan to India, where our Hafiz Jan's own ancestors had escorted him. With his sudden death, the tranquil Indian town of Bohana. They had pledged to guard for eternity the mausoleum of their commander, John Fashan Khan.